Hello people of the internet, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been around here. I'm sorry about that. Let me attempt to make it up to you today though, because I've got something very special for you. Today, we're going to be taking an exclusive first look at a game that I've been fairly hotly anticipating, you know, as soon as they announced that a certain London Underground line would be in this game. Uh, one of my favourites, in fact. I've already played the uh, first game in this series quite a bit on this channel. You know I'm a big fan of it. And today is the day the sequel drops. And not only am I very excited for this game's release, I've actually already been playing it. Thanks very kindly to Dovetail Games for supplying me a review code of this game. I've been playing it for about the last week or so. But this is my first impressions, thoughts, review analysis, if you will, of Train Sim World 2. The tagline for Train Sim World 2 consists of one simple sentence, the evolution of train simulation. And while normally you can dismiss most taglines as nothing more than marketing spiel, in the case of this game it's actually very accurate, because that's pretty much exactly what Train Sim World 2 is. Upon first booting up the game, you may even be forgiven for wondering if anything has changed at all. Aside from some different fonts and formats, the menus are almost identical to Train Sim World 1, right down to the sounds and background music. So right out of the gate, Train Sim World 2 lets you know exactly what it is. For better and for worse, it is less a full sequel and more the next evolution of the ongoing Train Sim World franchise. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, as I shall now explain. But first, to analyse where we are now, I feel like we need to examine where we've come from. And by that I mean, what did I think of the inaugural Train Sim World game? You see, I've played it fairly consistently since its release in mid-2017, and my feelings about the game have remained largely unchanged over time. It's a pleasant experience with highly detailed locos and nicely rendered stations and railway scenery, a little rough around the edges technically and lacking in a certain amount of vibrancy, but ultimately it's a very fun and engaging experience. You see, spoiler alert, I like driving trains, and Train Sim World is very good at doing what it says on the tin, i.e. simulating driving trains. So let's start by looking at what has been improved in Train Sim World 2. The most noticeable is the new physics engine, chiefly when dealing with adhesion levels, or lack thereof. Slippery tracks or strong gradients are more realistically modelled and demand more care with the throttle lever to avoid spinning your wheels and going nowhere fast. In fact, it seems that this new physics engine is the main reason Dovetail Games went full steam ahead, pun intended, with a sequel in the first place, in order to enable a broader variety of routes to be simulated, including the tantalising possibility of steam engines in the future. Choo choo! But back in the present, another improvement comes in the form of a streamlined interface and UI system. Minor tweaks here and there have been made to make the game slightly easier to pick up and play, especially for those not quite au fait with the inner workings of a sophisticated high speed train or freight locomotive. And that doesn't just apply to quote unquote casual gamers either. Even I, someone who loves and knows a lot about trains, wouldn't have the first idea what buttons to press if you presented me with the driver's seat of an ICE 3 high speed train. So, an emphasis has been placed on enabling a linear progression through each route, and make sure the tutorials cover all of the important details in a clear and concise way. And for the most part, they do just that. Of course, if you do fancy going ultra-realism masochist level, there's options to turn off UI elements and objective markers altogether to tweak the difficulty levels to your preference. But conversely, you aren't punished for playing with the training wheels on. And that's great. Additional improvements come in the form of weather and lighting effects, two things I personally feel the first game did pretty well to begin with. The morning sun glinting off the cab door of your loco is just as gorgeous as it ever was, and the rain splattering on the windscreen of your train is very nice and satisfying, if you can ever describe rain as nice and satisfying. For the most part though, a lot of the core gameplay experience remains unchanged, for better and for worse as I said. Just like the first Train Sim World, the priority has clearly been on rendering the rolling stock and locos to the maximum level of authenticity possible. Well, mission accomplished. The new stock looks fantastic, especially the 1972 tube stock on the Bakerloo line. For someone who regularly travels on the real Bakerloo line, take it from me that Dovetail Games' recreation of the 1972 stock is about as spot on as it's possible to be, right down to every interior map and maquette line seat in each carriage, and every beep, clunk and whir of the train in operation, including the adorable little whistle. It's all here, and it's all great. The Sandpatch Grade route is actually a revamped version of the very first route featured in the Trains Sim World series. And it shows, with an extra level of polish to the presentation and feel of the huge lumbering diesel locomotives and heavy boxcars we pilot on this route. And as for the Schnellfahrstrecke, or high speed route, between Cologne and Aachen, I don't say this lightly, it's spectacular. Locales like the stunning Koln Hauptbahnhof station are captured so well, and sitting at the controls of the sleek ICE 3 high speed train as you surge along at speeds of up to 155 miles an hour some of the fastest achievable by any loco in all of the train simulator games, 
is nothing short of exhilarating. It's not quite warp speed on the deck of the Millennium Falcon, but it's pretty darn close. Unfortunately, a fair amount of the technical issues I had with Trains in World 1 remain intact here. While the rolling stock is extremely polished, there's still some ragged edges the further away you get from the tracks itself, including a noticeable copy-paste job on the running in boards of certain stations on the Bakerloo line, which just comes off as sloppy, especially when you see the same Way Out sign also copy-pasted multiple times on the same platform. What Way Out is this sign pointing to, game? The ventilation shaft? Last I checked, we're playing as a train driver, not Solid Snake. The developers also claim that performance has been improved, but if that was the case, I really didn't notice it. The common train sim world problem of unstable frame rates is present here, with most routes struggling to stay consistent at 60 FPS, frequently dipping to 40 to 45 FPS, and going even as low as 20 FPS in certain dense urban areas, and especially in the heavy rain. I'm absolutely not a frame rate snob demanding everything run perfect 120 FPS without any drops whatsoever, but I would prefer the game to pick a frame rate and stick to it if possible. The hitches and lag spikes are particularly jarring at times, especially at high speed. There also seem to be a few glitches present. Multiple times when driving the 1972 stock, the power lever refused to work, and sometimes I'd be able to get it working again by resetting certain settings in the cab, and other times I'd have no choice but to reset mid-scenario. Similarly, one already very long shunting scenario on the sandpatch grade route was brought to a screeching halt, no pun intended, when the game told me to hold the independent brake in bail off position until the brake cylinders are empty of air. After 15 minutes of faffing around, including holding the brake lever down for minutes at a time, you try holding one mouse button down for 5 minutes and tell me how that feels, I eventually threw up my hands and quit out. Both of the above could be glitches, or they could be operational foibles that the game failed to explain to me, but even so, both were enough to ruin certain scenarios for me, and that's never a good thing for a game to do. You don't want to give players a reason to go sod it and play something else if you can avoid it. Fortunately, these are glitches that can be ironed out in time, and Dovetail Games have been pretty good with their track record of supporting and fixing issues post-release. What might be harder to fix is the main issue I've always had with Train Sim World, which is still present here, and that's a fairly lifeless in-game world. There are generally more AI trains bustling around while you play now, and the weather improvements also help breathe some life into the settings, but Train Sim World continues to struggle to add a certain something to the experience. It's hard to quantify it. Maybe it's the pedestrian AI drones wobbling around in total silence, or maybe it's the complete lack of interaction with any NPCs or really any external elements except for some fetch quests. Maybe it's little things like a surprisingly quite ambient sound at stations, especially on the underground ones. Now I'm not demanding rush hour rugby scrums to get on each train while a stressed guard shouts stand clear of the closing doors through their megaphone, but I definitely feel like Trains in World 2 is still lacking a certain extra level of immersion to the experience, to really take it to that next level of simulation gaming. Fortunately, the brand new features altogether for Trains in World 2 suggest that Dovetail Games are certainly moving in the right direction on this one. On the Sandpatch grade route, for instance, there are a few extra operations you can do outside of just driving trains, including operating the yard turntable and refueling your locomotives. And most significantly, this game includes two new creativity tools, a livery editor and a scenario designer. The livery editor is exactly what it says on the tin, allowing the player to make custom paint schemes for locos, units and wagons in the game, and while right now it's lacking some crucial features like the ability to import external graphics or share finished designs with other players, the editor itself is functional in a very Gran Turismo Sport-esque way. The scenario designer allows for an impressive level of customization, enabling the player to plot routes not only for player trains, but AI ones too. And best of all is the off-the-rails option, which allows any train to be run on any route you like, regardless on if it would be physically possible to do so in real life. That means electric trains running on completely non-electrified lines, and most hilarious of all, enormous diesel locomotives trying and utterly failing to fit inside the tiny Bakerloo line tunnels. I actually really like the fact that this option exists. It's basically developers actively allowing players to break their game in the name of messing around, and I appreciate that a lot. This is, in essence, the railway modelling axiom of it's my layout and I'll run whatever I want on it, taken to its logical conclusion. Trains in World 2 is less a huge step forward, but ironically more a next stop on an ongoing journey. In its current state, I'm not sure Trains in World 2 is enough to really move the needle, so if you enjoyed the first game like I did, then you'll absolutely enjoy this one. However, if you weren't able to get into the series before now, this might not do enough to sell you on it. But what is intriguing about Trains in World 2 is not just the improvements already made, but the direction these all point to. Dovetail Games have already announced a roadmap for the game, and alongside more new routes, including the Isle of Wight Island Line and Southeastern High Speed Route, Hype, 
There are more new features and upgrades being promised, such as the possibility of full multiplayer support, and ultimately, Train Sim World has always been a very earnest and peaceful gameplay experience. There's no smoke and mirrors here, just the pure, authentic satisfaction of driving trains. This is a game made by enthusiasts with a genuine love of the thing they're modelling, and it really shows. So if you're already aboard the Train Sim World train, this game will continue to provide an engaging experience with an intriguing journey ahead on the horizon. And if you are considering jumping on at this stop, now is as good a time as any to do so. So that'll just about do it. Those are my first thoughts on Train Sim World 2. Am I enjoying the game so far? Simple answer, yes. Will I be playing more of it on the channel? Another simple answer, yes. So watch out for that in the coming weeks. I'll have a new upload schedule starting up next week. All very, very exciting. And once again, thank you to Dovetail Games for supplying me with a review code to, to play this game for you all. That's very, very kind of them. They've actually been very nice to me the whole way. Did that influence my opinion though? Absolutely not. Hand on heart honest opinion the whole way. I would have said exactly everything that I have said in this video today had I paid full money for it, as I believe I did the first Train Sim World and a lot of the DLC packs. Meantime, hope you have a great rest of your week. If you yourself have decided to pick up Train Sim World 2 and you are playing it now or have been playing it, let me know your thoughts on the game. Let me know if you're kind of on the fence about Train Sim World 2, uh, if you never really got into the first Train Sim World, if you want to know whether there's certain things in the game that might sway you, let me know down in the comments. Let's have a nice civil conversation about it. I'll even brew up a cup of tea. For me, maybe not all of you, that might be quite a lot of cups of tea. We might run out of mugs and tea bags. Let's have a nice chat in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already around here and I'll see you guys on the other side.